Also tonight, parents are upset over unsure boundary lines. Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools is changing school zones in the southern part of the district. This is supposed to make room for a new high school and middle school. The district met with families tonight to get feedback on its plan. The goal is to reduce overcrowding and improve socioeconomic diversity in schools. But as WCNC Charlotte's Julia Kaufman reports, many parents worry the proposal does the opposite. Parents are pouring over these packets, looking at how the proposed boundary changes could affect their child's education. Many argue these plans pack lower income families into some schools instead of diversifying the population. A crowded cafeteria at South Mecklenburg High School of unhappy parents. By hurting these schools, you're sending families away from this area, and you're only going to make the problem even worse. The reason? How CMS is proposing to regroup neighborhoods for South Charlotte schools. When we look at, at a macro level, that school's socioeconomic diversity is in fact um, become, becoming more imbalanced rather than falling into a more balanced ratio. For example, the plan puts Ardry Kell's low income population at less than 1%. South Mecklenburg's would be 50%. Parent Kristen Conway worries this will stretch South Mech's resources, focusing on meeting students' basic needs over their education. We're talking about needs for clothing. We're talking about needs for backpacks to go home so they can eat on the weekends. And that's something that when you have a greater concentration, you have the inability to provide for all. As South Charlotte grows, they need more schools. A new high school is under construction and CMS is planning for a new middle school. To decide who will feed into these schools, several elementary, middle and high schools will be affected. Many parents want the change to balance out the school's populations, making them more equitable. I think that that's actually fantastic feedback. Dennis Lucaria with CMS says planners will try to shift some lines to reflect the community's priority. I think shift a bit to the extent that we can. You saw the map there. There's real challenges with drawing diverse boundaries in some of our parts of our county. The district has one more virtual session to get feedback on its first draft. Then it'll release a second draft in April and in May, the school board will vote on a final plan. In South Charlotte, Julia Kaufman, WCNC Charlotte. All right, so you might be wondering how the district might have come up with some of these school assignments and these boundaries. Well, it does have guidelines to determine how it draws boundaries and how it assigns students to what's called a home school. And the school board created these. You can see it's called a student assignment plan. And there are four main priorities. The district says that it weighs all of these equally. The first is going to be distance from home to school. And of course, the district says it wants to minimize that distance. There's also the socioeconomic diversity, which we heard mentioned in Julia's piece there, some of the parents saying they're concerned that really it's not showing a balance in the way that these assignments are done. Now the district does say that it would like to reduce concentration of lower income and high needs children, um, but it's also keep in mind looking at different factors other than just socioeconomic diversity. The third one is going to be feeder patterns. So elementary attendance areas kept intact as part of middle and high school feeder and patterns. And then finally, there's what they'd like to see is the maximizing of the building capacity, which is obviously is self-explanatory as far as how many students a building can hold. The district also has secondary goals that it would like to meet, it says, in deciding school assignments. Those would include keeping entire neighborhoods together. So that could actually vary depending on, you know, the certain neighborhood, but they could be considering commonly accepted neighborhood boundaries. They could look at zoning decisions, covenant agreements, homeowners associations. And then it says it would also like to consider projections for growth and also demographic shifts. The district says that it adopted these particular guidelines in 2017, so that's when this most was most currently updated. But according to the guidelines themselves, they say that they want these to be revisited and revised every six years.